Welcome back as we explore chapter three of Philippians. We hope you've enjoyed the study this far. And as we've already noted, this book of Philippians is being written to the people of Philippi by Paul as he's imprisoned in Rome. And while his circumstances are one that we would consider very discouraging, he considers them to be joy and continues to encourage the people of Philippi in joy. Chapter three is no different and he tells them and us that no matter what happens, they are to rejoice to the Lord. He indicates that the reason for his repeating this is to actually safeguard their faith, to protect it. He also warns them to rely not on their flesh, but simply in their faith. The only value is to know Christ and all else is to be discarded. What he's saying relates heavily to the heavenly prize that awaits us when we live a life for Christ. In chapter one, Paul reminded us to live our lives in a way that was blameless and worthy of the gospel of Christ, noting that our witness can help or hinder both our walk and the walk of others. In chapter two, Paul tells us not to argue or complain, but to shine like a star in the sky, blameless and pure as an example to others. Living in this way can seem like a tall order at times. And it's easy to be left wondering how we could possibly find joy in any matter. So it's here in chapter three that Paul urges us to press on in our journey. You see, starting is only the beginning and nothing is accomplished by beginning, but the beauty comes in the task when it's complete. Now I consider the task of painting to be fun, yet somewhat of a challenge. There's excitement and I love taking that first roller of paint and painting that wall and seeing the wall transform to a new color. But you know, until you finish all the tedious little things that go along with it, such as filling in the corners, painting around the trim and refreshing the ceiling if it needs to be, you can't truly relax in the beauty of a refreshed room. The Christian life is no different, and Paul understood that the most excellent life was yet to come. Paul knew that nothing on earth could compare to what we'll experience because of the res resurrection of Christ, and it was his growing faith that allowed him to continue his journey and find joy amidst the toughest of circumstances. As we live this life, just as with anything else, we must continue to grow in our knowledge and strength. Now, sports was something Paul used to relate to those in Philippi. As he was writing, he used the example of training and gaining that strength. He used this vision to help them understand the Christian life. You see, in a race, the runner trains to gain strength and speed. He continuously is working. This doesn't happen overnight. But over the time, that prolonged training continues to grow and build so that he can eventually win the race. If that training stops or pauses at any time, some of that strength and speed can be lost. And so it was through this that they could see their goal and the finish line was the runner's true focus. Similarly, as a Christian, God must be our main focus measuring all else against what he's already brought to our attention and taught us. As we continue to keep the things in mind that we've already learned and live them out, we continually add to our understanding, our spiritual growth deepens, and our ways of life become closer and closer to what God would have for us. Our circumstances may not always seem easy, but as we press on and choose to live as God leads, we will become more determined to win that prize that is before us. So I encourage you to continue pressing on through this time or any other. Continue to praise God for all he has done and all he'll continue to do. Now, if you'd like to access the follow-up study to this devotional, check out bethanywest.org slash media slash devotionals. And don't forget to join us back here next week as Pastor Melanie wraps up chapter four of Philippians. God bless.